Okay, it's time to make an ice cream cone. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, first, a quick comment or two about the interface. So you can see that we're in 3D view. We've got a screen on the left here. These are the, uh, this is the tool shelf. We can enable or disable that by simply clicking T. Uh, if we want to, we can also enable the properties uh, window. And that simply, that happens by simply pressing N. And you can see when I press N again, it disappears. When I press T again, it disappears. And for those of you who uh, haven't seen this before, it is screencasting, which means that you can actually look down here and see which keys I'm pressing. I'll try to say them out loud, uh, but okay, here we go. Time to make an ice cream cone. I'm gonna widen this just a little bit. There we go. So first thing you might notice is that we're in 3D view. Um, and this is a perspective 3D view. By hitting the number five on the number pad, we go into non-perspective view. Uh, sometimes I like to work in that mode, but it's up to you. Uh, we'll go to top view, which is seven. We'll go to side view, which is one. And the other side is three. Notice that if we hit five now, we get the full grid system. And this means that we are in uh, non-perspective view. As soon as we go to perspective view, we lose that grid in the background. And you can see how all the lines point back to uh, an artificial horizon. And this again is uh, an indication that we're in perspective view mode. Okay, I'm gonna hit five again. Go to top view. Uh, I'm gonna hit X to get rid of the cube, the default cube. Uh, shift C puts the cursor right in the middle and shift middle mouse. And I can drag and relocate that to where I want it to be. And I'm gonna go shift A that opens up the add menu. I could have just gone add down here, but I'm just so used to doing that. Shift A, uh, and the mesh we're gonna add is going to be a cone. And there's our cone. We'll go to side view. We can see it's upside down. Uh, shift, middle mouse, and we'll rotate it, R key. If you hold down the control button, then it, uh, it constrains the um, it constrains it to even increments as we rotate it. So there we go, that looks pretty even to me. Right now, we're in object mode. And if you want to switch to edit mode, which we're gonna to need to do, uh, you have to hit the E key. I'm sorry, hit, hit the tab key, there we go. Uh, the other thing to notice, I'll hit tab key once again, we'll go back into object mode. We could click edit mode by clicking down here as well too. Uh, but anyway, back to object mode. In this mode, you can also see that we have a very basic material. And that material might get in the way of our meshing. So I'm gonna click the Z key and that gets rid of the, uh, the basic material. Hit tab key once again. And there's a couple different ways we could select one vertice down at the bottom by right clicking, or I'll hit the A key, deselect everything. Uh, or we could use the B key to select the top row, which is the opposite. What I wanna do here is just simply drag this up so we get something that's shaped a little more like a cone. Shift, middle mouse, drag this up and we've got a cone. Now remember, I could have just clicked here and that would have amounted to exactly the same thing. This is gonna be a really basic ice cream cone and for now that's just fine. Uh, actually, well, we could do an extrusion on this. Let's, uh, let's do that. Hit the tab key again, we'll drag this back up and I'm gonna hit A. Then I'm gonna use the B key to select all the vertices on the top. Now notice that bottom vertice is not selected. Three key to get side view. We wanna make sure we're in side view when we do this. E key extrudes, and you can see we can drag it really up, uh, really high if we want to. We can in fact pull it down this way. I'll just move it up just a tiny little bit, and I'm gonna hit the S key to then scale it out. So we extruded all of those top vertices using the E key, then we lifted it, and then we hit the S for scale. Let's do it again. Extrude, scale, extrude, E key, lift it up, S scale, extrude, as for scale, and we'll do one more. Extrude, as for scale. And we get kind of a nice little natural kind of arc or arch there. Uh, let's just drag this down a little bit more. I know it doesn't really look like an ice cream cone, but that's okay. Hit the Z buffer. We'll see what this thing looks like, and it's it's okay. Um, I'm gonna bring up the, uh, the tool shelf, T key for that. And what I'm gonna do is set it to smooth. And yeah, it's not too bad. It's not perfect, but uh, uh, it's okay because we're just doing a very basic ice cream cone for now anyway. We're in side view and you might notice a bit of a problem here. Uh, we want that ice cream cone to, oh no, I'm sorry, we're in side view, that's perfect actually. Never mind. Okay, shift middle mouse button. Uh, we might need to scale this thing a bit. That's pretty gonna help. Okay, let's get rid of that side menu, which is T, the tool shelf. And let's split the screen 
And what we're going to do is over here, we're going to show camera view, which is zero on the number pad. And we can scroll in. I'm just using the middle mouse button to scroll in. Uh, and back over here on the left side window, what we're going to do is add some ice cream. Before you add anything, though, what I would suggest doing is always deselect all of your objects and make sure that you're in object mode. So A key de deselects everything. I'm going to go to top view. Uh, our cursor looks like it's in the middle. Shift A brings up the add menu. And we're going to add an, a UV sphere. We'll take the defaults. If you notice it, put it down low. That's because the 3D cursor was down low. But we can easily drag that back up like this. Uh, I'm going to scale that a little bit so it just fits in there quite nicely. In fact, if it flows over the sides a little bit, that's okay. Uh, we'll lift it up again a bit like that. Looks good. And I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to the tool shelf menu again, and we're going to set it smooth. And then what we're going to do? I'll get rid of the tool shelf. Next thing we'll do is go to edit mode, or sorry, we we'll go to sculpt mode. And now what we're going to do is kind of click on this thing. Actually, we'll bring up the T menu again. And you can notice that we've got a couple of choices here. We can add or subtract. Right now what we're doing is adding. And so wherever we click, it actually causes it to jut out a little bit. Okay. Uh, we'll also click on subtract and try that too and just see what happens here. We're trying to just give this some definition so it's not just a perfect sphere. And uh, you can see what we've got to do here is, is move this thing down so it's uh, actually aligned with our camera. We'll get out of sculpt mode. We'll go back to edit mode. Click the edit button right there. And actually, you know what we'll do? We'll go to uh, object mode. And I'm going to select both of these objects. Now, if I right click on them, it selects one. If I hold down the shift button, it allows me to select both. And what I could do is simply click the blue arrow, slide them down, or I could have hit the G key to grab. And uh, I should just mention that G for grab, uh, R for rotate, and this works because they're both selected. Uh, G, R, and S. Those are your friends. So S is for, for scale, R for rotate, of course, and um, G is for grab. Okay, we've got the object pretty much aligned where we want it. Let's just do a quick render, see how it looks. F for render, and there's our ice cream cone. It doesn't look terrible. You can see that this rounding effect, uh, set smooth, really didn't give the effect that we're looking for, but let's just ignore that for now. We can always come back and look at it later. Okay, I'm going to select one object at a time, and let's give these things a little bit of color. So I'm going to start with the cone, and uh, with the cone selected, we're going to click over here. Might have to move this over a little bit more. There we go. And we'll click Material. It's going to be a new material, and we'll select a color. And we, I want kind of an orangey color for the cone, a brownish orange color. If we drop this down a little bit, uh, let's see, maybe like that. Okay, let's just render that and see how it looks. Uh, it looks too chocolatey. That would actually be a good color for the uh, for the chocolate. Click on this again. We want it to be more orange. Having a hard time finding the right color here. Uh, well, it looks gold almost. Anyway, whatever. We'll just take it. Now we'll click here on the ice cream. Click new. And I'm going to select chocolate this time. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, that looks, well, that's not too bad actually. Let's render it and see how. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so we've got our basic ice cream cone done, uh, more or less. But I'm going to add another scoop of ice cream on top. And what I'll do, uh, remember to deselect everything. I'll go to top view. I'm going to put the 3D cursor up here this time. So we actually add on top. So vertically speaking, it's aligned or it's, uh, it's above the cone. I'll go to 7. I'm going to hit Shift C once again. Shift C centers a cursor. And then what I'll do is scroll in a little bit here. Uh, Shift A. I'm going to add a mesh, make it a UV sphere, and I'm going to go to side view, and for some reason it dropped it way down low. I'm not sure what I did there. Uh, we'll scale it up, and we're going to do the same thing again where we go smooth, and then we set uh, our mode to sculpt mode. And you can see again, once again, we've got add or subtract. Right now we'll just click on add, and we'll turn around so we get, there we go, lots of definition on this thing. Look like there's a few bytes been taken out of it. And we'll click add. We were on subtract before. Make it look a little bit lumpy. That's okay. And that's not too bad, actually. Okay, let's go back to edit mode or object mode. Scale it up a bit. And maybe drop it down a bit as well. And let's see how it looks. F12 to render. 
Okay, it's really coming along nicely. It could be smoothed out a little bit more. Again, we're just trying to do a quick first uh, attempt at a model here. We need to put some col color on this, so we click New. We're still, we still have the Material button selected. We'll click New. We'll go down here. We'll select a color for this cone. Uh, let's just leave that for now, actually, because we're going to add a material onto here. And that material could be one of many different types. Uh, and I'm going to select, oh, I don't know. Let's try clouds. And I'm going to rend render it without changing any of the colors. And we have this kind of interesting speckled color, which really doesn't look all that appealing. But you can always go back and change this. If you go down to the bottom, you can see that we've got a pink color. Uh, let's just change that to maybe more blue or color. Uh, all right, and let's render it so you can see the color changed. And there you can see the pink has gone to kind of a bluish color and it's mixed with the white. And that white color is back here in the material button. This is a little bit confusing. So if we change this to red or reddish color, we've now got a combination of that red under the material with this blue under the texture. Again, somewhat complex. After all, see how it looks. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of ice cream that is. Nothing I've ever seen before. By the way, you might have noticed when we rendered this, it's a little, it's a little too shiny, and that has to do with the, the specular setting. So let's hit Escape, and let's drop the uh, specularity down significantly. We'll take it almost right down to nothing. re and we should see that it's now more of a dull finish. It doesn't look all that much like ice cream. Now I might have dropped it down too much. It will bring it up about halfway. Uh, okay, I think we're finished the basic ice cream cone. Uh, again, I want to select all three top ice cream, middle ice cream, and the cone. I'm going to grab them and I'm going to rotate them a little bit just so they fit in the window. I also want the bottom, the cone itself, to stick out a bit. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to move the cursor to the left window, hit 7, and now maybe I'll hit 3. I can hit 5 or uh, and 4, by the, or sorry, 6 and 4, by the way, to rotate this way. And there's the angle the camera's seen. I want to rotate it a little more. Uh, I'm going to go to top view now. Where's my camera? There it is, I'll rotate. And what I want to do is rotate the whole thing this way a little bit, just so that the cone becomes a little more obvious when we render it. Uh, I hit F12 again, and you can see there's, there's still some issues with lighting. <clears throat> we haven't talked about that yet. So we have a light over here, a camera here, and what we really need is three-point lighting. That's the best, but we can just add one more light for now. So I'm going to click over here, put the 3D cursor here, hit A so we deselect everything. Shift A brings up the menu. And we're going to add a lamp, and I like spotlights. That'll give us a shadow if we want to add a shadow at some point, which I think we will. I'll lift this up, and I'm going to rotate it. So all I do is click on the arrow, R for rotate, same for lights as it is for objects, 7 to go to top view, and I got lucky. It's actually centered. It's, it's uh, The axis of that light is pointed directly through the center of the object, uh, which, is, which is right where we want it. Let's render. Let's make sure it's not too bright. Well, it's pretty good. <laughs> that ice cream is a little bit unappealing looking, but that's the way it goes. This part of the cone is still quite dark, and we could fix that, I think, by simply lowering the spotlight, rotating up like this. We always need to check in three planes. So we're at the side view here. It's, uh, it's good. Hit the one key, so make sure it's centered. Uh, again, we're checking the light to make sure it's pointed through the object, and it is in all three planes. Uh, that's top view. We'll hit F3, and that's a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but close enough. Okay, uh, what we want to do is cast a shadow. So I'm going to hit the A key, deselect everything, and I'm going to uh, Shift A, bring up the menu, and we're going to add a mesh and make it a plane. And we're going to scale this thing up so it's really big. Now right now it's kind of cutting the cone, uh, and we want this to be a background. So I'm going to go to side view, and I'm going to rotate it. Remember, if we hold down the control key, we can constrain the rotation to even increments. That's probably good enough there. But you can see that it's not really, if we look at the right window, exactly where we want it. So what I'll do is click back over here and now rotate and position it. And what I'm doing is I'm working to the left window, but I'm watching the right window to see what happens. And I'll grab it. I want to make sure that this light is going to actually provide a shadow. So I'm going to need to grab it and rotate it. There we go. You can see now that the light is shining on the object and should project a shadow onto that background, if I've done this right. Go to side view. Yeah, it looks pretty good. After hoping to bound, there we go. We've got a shadow showing that there is something at least in the background. Uh, for now, that's pretty good. We can always come back and work on this a little bit later, maybe add a cherry on top, but I think we've done a pretty good job here.